Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today we're looking at a problem that actually involves the concept of Faraday's law. And in this particular question, we are dealing with a loop of wire that is placed within a magnetic field, and then we're told that it's going to rotate, but it's going to rotate a little bit differently, and we're asked to work out what is the EMF that is generated in terms of how it's represented in terms of a graph. So let's quickly draw our situation. So we have a North Pole here and a South Pole here. So our magnetic field lines are moving across. And then what I have is a loop of wire that we are told initially is going to be in the direction where the plane of the wire is in the same direction as my magnetic field lines. So this is my drawing. It's not a fantastic drawing, but um, you'll hopefully see what's happening. So this loop of wire is going to rotate. It's gonna make one complete revolution in two seconds, and then it's gonna make two revolutions in the following two seconds. And we're wanting to know what the graph looks like. So let's draw our graph first. So here I have a uh, graph and this is going to be my time and I'm going to know that this is going to be a total of four seconds So I'm going to just simply mark a point here mark a point here And then I'll basically have the other points here So this is one second two seconds three seconds and four seconds And then I'm going to draw two lines here and two lines below to represent the EMF that I'm generating here now These aren't specific values here, but we can at least uh, notify in terms of this is a value and this is twice that value. This is going to rotate once in two seconds. And because of the fact that this position here, we have maximum flux going through the loop here, then the rate of change of flux, if you remember Faraday's law says this, that the EMF is equal to negative the rate of change of flux with respect to time. Now we're not worried too much about the negative here at this case because that's related to Lenz's law But in this position my flux is at a maximum, but my rate of change of flux is actually at a minimum So in this case my EMF in this position is actually zero Now obviously after it does one complete loop then it's going to be again zero by the time it gets to after two seconds So that is my value there the fact is at 180 degrees, I have maximum flux as well. Again, the rate of change of flux is zero in this case. So all of these are true. I'm gonna have zero EMF at the zero seconds, one second and two seconds. And now what happens in between? Well, when it turns 90 degrees, we have no flux through the loop, but that's when the change of flux is maximum. So as a result, I'm gonna get a graph that looks like this. And there's your classic sinusoidal curve that you have with EMF, which is really AC generation. But now comes the tricky part. That's the first part. But what now happens is when I turn it twice in the same time period. And here is an important thing. First of all, we're going to get two loops here, right? Because the fact that it spins twice, I'm going to get two cycles in the same amount of time. Now, caution though, that does not mean I get exactly the same amplitude because the fact is, is that the rate of change of flux, not only does it actually happen faster, but the rate actually increases, which means that my EMF increases. And because it's twice as fast, my EMF is twice as much. And so I'm gonna get the same cycle, but in this case, I'm gonna get a maximum that is twice as much. And that's why I did this over here. And so as a result, I'm gonna have a complete cycle, basically between the two and the three, and a complete cycle between the three and the four. But of course, I have to have maximum at the point where I have like so. So I get a maximum up here, comes down, there's my first one, and of course it repeats again. So I'm going to again get something like this. Now you'll see here I have those two concepts. It moves with twice as fast, so I have two cycles in here and one cycle here. But because the rate is twice as fast, my EMF is twice as much, and so therefore the amplitude has to be twice as much. I hope that has helped you understand the concept of Faraday's law a little better. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care. Bye for now.